Next topic of our discussion is detergent. What is a detergent, you may ask? Detergent is a medium that facilitates cleaning. And once again, cleaning is the removal of gross visible and invisible soil from our surgical instruments. We use enzymatic detergents in sterile processing, for the most part. There are other detergents, but primarily we use enzymatic detergents. Let's first talk about enzymes. Now, enzymes are a medium that facilitate the breakdown of nutrients or digestion. You have enzymes inside your body, inside your digestive system. And these enzymes help to facilitate the breakdown of nutrients as you ingest them. The makeup of the food is as follows. We have proteins, we have carbohydrates, and we have fats. The medical term for protein is protein. The one for fats is lipo. And the one for um, uh, carbohydrates is amylo. Anything uh, in medicine that you hear that ends with the letters ASE or ACE usually indicates that we're talking about an enzyme. So we have three different enzymes. Amylase for carbohydrates or starches, uh, protease for protein, and lipase for fats. Let's think about what a human being is made out of. You are what you eat. Protein, carbohydrates, and fats. And if a surgeon operates on the human body, their scalpel and other surgical instruments will interact with carbohydrates, with proteins and fats. So therefore, all of these things will be deposited on your surgical instruments. And therefore, it only makes sense for us to have enzymatic detergent that will utilize these enzymes that will help to break down uh, these uh, substances left on the surgical instruments. There are very specific guidelines that our detergents uh, ought to follow. Um, the detergents need to be pH neutral. pH is measured from 0 to 14. It is a scale. The lower the number, the higher the acidity. The higher the number, the higher the alkalinity. They are opposites and they are extreme. Yet, on both poles, just like North Pole and South Pole in our planet, it's pretty cold. So both extremes are caustic. The normal neutral pH in the human body is somewhere between 6.5 to 7.5. The higher the number, the more alkaline it is. Uh, the detergent should also be low foaming and free rinsing. Many years ago, I, I put in a uh, liquid uh, detergent used for uh, washing dishes by hand in the sink into the dishwasher. And oh my goodness, what happened thereafter? All of these suds came out of the uh, machine and I spent my entire afternoon cleaning up the floor with a shovel, no less. So our detergent, detergents that we use in sterile processing have to be low foaming. Uh, they also have to be free rinsing, so it's easy for us to wash it off. And these detergents have to work in mild water temperatures because hot temperatures and cold temperatures deactivate the enzymes and other things inside the detergent that make it useful. Plus, since we do a lot of the washing by hand, it has to be comfortable for your hands to be suspended in that water. So the water has to be of uh, relatively um, mid-level temperature, something about your body temperature, uh, just to make it comfortable, maybe a little bit warmer. The detergent should also be shelf stable, it should have a good, good long shelf life, and the detergent should be cost effective, meaning you should be able to buy it at a good price to save your department money. Is it really a consideration for the exam? No, but these are the parameters assigned to our detergent. There are certain things that detergent does all detergents, they all do this. They break down the soil. We have to emulsify them. So detergents have to have emulsifiers inside them. What does it do? Emulsifiers simply lubricate the dirt particles. So they become slippery. Remember, water is the universal solvent. And if we're dealing with a dirt particle or bio burden, biological burden or load on the instrument, we're talking about a slippery item that can no longer sit on the surface and will just simply wash off. Detergents also treat water by introducing substances called surfactants into the water. A surfactant reduces the surface tension of water uh, and makes the water flexible and it's able to get into all sorts of nooks and crannies of uh, in, inside lumens, inside little uh, ratchets on the surgical instruments, all the crevices, and be able to uh, wash away the emulsified dirt particles. The detergents also sequester uh, dirt particles, meaning once they lubricate them, 
they prevent them from reattaching, and that's called sequestration. Just like a judge sequesters a jury so they don't come in contact with anybody else, they also sequester the dirt particles. The uh, detergents also employ other means. Now, after emulsification, there's an interesting word called deflocculation. And deflocculation simply means fat dispersal. Deflocculation, uh, if you've ever seen commercials for the Dawn detergent, where they have a pot full of greasy water, and then they drop a little drop of uh, Dawn detergent inside that pot, you see the grease particles dissipate. Well, that's deflocculation. Sometimes the dirt particles also attach themselves by electromagnetic or electrochemical bonds uh, to their intended targets. And for that, we need to employ things called chelation to draw them away uh, and to break those electrochemical bonds. Chelation, sequestration, they're kind of uh, very similar terms and they're oftentimes used um, synonymously. All right, so this is, this is what the... Uh, detergents do. Sequestration, chelation, emulsification, deflocculation, all these interesting terms, surfactants. Uh, please review this video to uh, look at their definition once again, as these terms are very important for you to know and understand and retain this data when you take in the examination. Just to finish off the subject of cleaning, uh, the other important part of cleaning and decontamination is the use of nylon brushes and sponges. We have these things in our department to perform manual cleaning effectively. So we use soft nylon brushes um, and sponges to do the job. Okay, And first things first, you have to imagine that the department has a three sink setup in order for you to do the manual cleaning properly. Soak, wash, rinse. At least the rinse cycle inside uh, the third sink should be done with pure deionized water. You will find that's not always the case, but for the purpose of the examination, as the examination resides in the perfect world, you should know that this is exactly how the sinks are set up. Uh, soak, wash, and rinse, and rinse is in the deionized water. Um, to help us in cleaning, we employ brushes and sponges. Let's start with sponges. Oftentimes, sponges come impregnated with uh, enzymatic detergent. Um, and sponges are a non-reusable item. Okay, We dispose of them once per shift or sooner. Soft nylon brushes are oftentimes disposable and sometimes they're reusable. So if they are reusable and we follow the manufacturer's instructions and the policies of the department to reuse the brushes. Yeah? So put them through the uh, mechanical washing cycle at the end of each shift and then you're able to reuse them. Brushing is generally done under water. It's done, you brush your instruments in the to and fro motion, meaning back and forth, to and fro, and with the grain of the instruments. Don't go against the pattern or the grain of the instruments as you wash them because that's going to damage the finish. All right, so to and fro, and not in a circular motion ever, uh, with the grain of the instrument, with a pattern on the metal, and under water. We do the brushing under water in order to prevent aerosolization or the formation of aerosol, meaning fine droplets. Uh, the reason we don't want any aerosol uh, is for you not to uh, be contaminated yourself, even though you're wearing a full personal protective gown, uh, personal protective equipment, which includes a face shield and mask, and it's an important factor, and this is going to be on the test to be sure. This concludes our conversation about manual washing, tools for cleaning, water and so on and so forth. Please read the chapter in a book in order to beef yourself up further as you discuss this.